Okay, so today on Hear Them Out with Hannah Mears, I'm here with Cody Sable, and he is a phenomenal painter. He does a lot of speed painting, fine arts, shoe customizations, pretty much anything you can think of. And he's from the Pittsburgh area and also does some work now for a local little brewery in Latrobe. So I have been there. I have seen your artwork. And now it just seems like your stuff is exploding everywhere. So Cody, first and foremost, thank you for joining me. I'm excited to talk about everything that I just mentioned. But first off, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. We woke up uh, super early just because we had a, a little baby. So um, if I look tired, that is, uh, that is why. Um, well, but, congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been fun. I shouldn't say a little baby anymore because he's like 11 months old and he oh my gosh. is uh, heavy. What's his name? <laughs> his name is Brooks. Oh, how cute. Well, I have a little puppy that's nine weeks old now. So I was up very early as well. So you're fine. <laughs> Chances are you have the harder time than than we're having uh, with him because he's, he's <laughs> finally getting his uh, a grip on, uh, you know, how to be a toddler, I guess. Yeah. Which, uh, isn't that difficult? But puppies are are yeah. another, another level of that. Oh, we're we're learning slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah. But congratulations. It's so exciting. Have you painted? I'm curious. Have you been painting your son as well? No, I haven't. I, have does that make me a bad dad? dad? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's a good thing. I, I paint things using like him as inspiration for those things. Um, there you go. What are some things that he inspires you to do? So uh, the dipped paintings that you see, mm -hmm. um, I did uh, bananas. I did Mickey Mouse. I did, um, I got one just right over there that I'm working on. Um, I have a couple of them getting made and I kind of took these objects that, um, I don't know, they're, they're everyday objects. Some are a little like, uh, you know, um, they're all fun and they're all colorful things and they all represent something. And I dip them in black paint and it almost kind of is like, uh, it almost kind of reminds me that it's, like I'm, I'm growing up okay. that things look, oh, I guess, ah, geez, I really haven't thought, thought it out too hard because I, I'm a very visual person. Mm -hmm. So when I go to explain something using words, I, uh, I have a difficult time doing that sometimes. It, but it, it makes sense though, like the black, the maturity and the paintings, things like that. It does. Yeah. I see what you're going with with that. I want to explain it not so grim, but it's kind of like the death of your childhood. You <laughs> almost have to like grow up. It, it sounds grim. It's yeah. not meant to be grim. It's like this, uh, you know, we, we like that thing right there is going to be a donut. And I, okay. I like, half dipped it in black paint. And it's like, things are just different. You know, right. I don't know. It's, it's real weird. It, it's aesthetically pleasing. So maybe if the words don't match up, it's just supposed to look good anyways. It is. It always looks really cool. So no matter how people interpret it, it looks good. And so does all of your other artwork. So I'm really curious, though, you posted a then and now on Twitter. And oh, your yeah. then was from when you were little and you were at an easel. And I mean, you were like knee high at this age, like drawing on an easel. So where did your love of art come from? Yeah, I, I think it's always been there. I, I really do believe that I was born doing it um, like it was there was just always something inside of me that wanted me to take what I see in real life. And it was just I, I always knew I was interested in it. But when I saw that picture, when my parents would like tell me, yeah, like you're just that's what you were doing when you were uh, like before you could even walk. You were just using markers and crayons. And and I guess I didn't know that. So it makes me think that, like, maybe I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Well, you're also using it for so many different awesome causes as well. So I really want to talk about some of the different things that you've been able to do. You use a lot of your artwork now um, for different causes and foundations. And I did get to watch you at Thon. You, pa you speed painted Saquon Barkley. Oh, um, yeah. So your speed painting as well is something that's just so cool to me. And you use it for a bunch of different things. You also did the Shea Leave thing with it. So First and foremost, where did the speed painting talent come from? Did you just wake up one day and like you could just speed paint? No, I, uh, <laughs> that would have been nice. Yeah. But, um, 
I, I went to a small school in Kentucky. I went to Kentucky Christian University. Uh, despite my dad's best efforts to get me to go to Penn State, I wanted to go play football. <laughs> And I knew I couldn't do that at Penn State. So I went uh, to a small school in Kentucky to do that. And the, the regimen of studying and football was like 95% of the time that you're awake. Th those are the two things that you're doing. So to kind of break up the monotony of the day of just studying and just playing football, I would hang out with these, uh, I'm going to call them band nerds, because they were, they were there at the school to be worship majors. But they, you know, they all got close and they formed their own little bands and they would go play at these different like little spots and e either on campus or in the surrounding like we we're decently close to Lexington and Huntington, West Virginia, where Marshall University is, Ashland, like a couple of like neighboring uh, towns, little cities. And while they were just like messing around on campus, just practicing, whatever, I would just go and draw and paint during their little band sessions I don't know the terminology mm -hmm. and eventually I started trying to do it performance wise I started like googling it and I, I would see other people doing it and I would just try to recreate that and then I think every day since September 15th 2014 I've done a speed painting or something like that what every day you do a speed painting I try to do something art related every day just so, to keep but like, yourself was, fresh with it. Say that again. Sorry. Just to keep yourself fresh with it all the time. No, I, I just wanted to do it. Um, I, it didn't have anything uh, other to do than that's just what I wanted to be doing, you know. Okay. And and I kind of gave up on art for uh, not giving up on it. I just didn't think I. Could, I just knew it was a hobby, and I didn't really do anything real with it until those days of college. When did it, when did it become a realization to you then that you could do this for a living? Like this is something you could do more than just as a hobby. Um, that's a good question. Cause I, I still don't know if I know <laughs> I can do this as a full-time thing. Um, but at least but, you're making money. You can make money from it, a solid profit from it. Yeah. I, I, well, this is the only thing that I do. And, um, so it has been able to provide for us, uh, which is, which is really nice. And I think the first time I thought that I could do this full time is when, so I, I worked at a church in the, uh, in the South Hills of Pittsburgh and my art paychecks for the month were like more than that job. And I was like, you know what, one of these, one of these months, I'm just going to have to decide whether I, I, I'm going to pursue this or, or stay here. And, uh, you know, I got some counseling from some close friends that are like, just do it. Just take the leap. You're like, you'll, you'll love it. And uh, then I, I guess September of 2018, I made that leap. I don't know if it was a specific moment that I thought that I could do this full time because every week you're like focused on what's coming in the next week. Right. But I'm, I'm, I love that a lot of your background is very faith-based and you've done things. You can check out everything that Cody has on his YouTube channel and his website as well. I mean, you have beautiful stuff and a lot of it as well you've done. It shows that you do things for services and ministry. So how much of your like leaps of faith are because of your faith in God? Um, I think God would have been happy with me if I would have stayed at the ministry and did art part-time or did art for time, uh, full-time and did it for him. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if I did anything extra to please him with my decision to go full-time with art, but I do believe that doing whatever he kind of gave me to do with my talents as far as, uh, that didn't sound, uh, like with the art or with teaching or with uh, just whatever skills that I feel like he has blessed me with just, just to use those to my full extent. Um, and I think that is what pleases him. So, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I feel like God is a, uh, I feel like God is a, is a much more um, maybe much more of like a, a cheerleader as long as you're doing 
the things that he wants, uh, that he, he's kind of put in you and led you to do. I feel like God sits back and just is like uh, that supportive parental figure that goes, right. you know, you know what, buddy, I, I'm whatever you choose to do. I'm going to I'm going to love that you are doing it. Well, I absolutely love that take on it. And I love what you've been doing. I mean, the things that you've been able to do are crazy. You've made some paintings, like I alluded to earlier, for some of the top athletes in Pittsburgh. There are ones you're making of Troy Palamalu. You did stuff for Ryan Shazier. You did stuff for Sidney Crosby, James Conner, like all these athletes that Pittsburgh knows and loves. What is that experience like for you to be able to create art for these types of athletes? You know, it's really cool sometimes is they, how we view them at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of the best, you know, athletes that have ever come through, they are just as interested in sometimes, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes they're just as interested in what I'm doing with like in the studio, in the dungeon and uh, that I am interested uh, with them and their, you know, sports. Like, um, Sidney Crosby asked me so many questions. Really? Like, about me. And I was like, why do you, like... Yeah. Like, genuinely interested in in some of the stuff I did. And I was like, wow, these people, like... And and you realize they're just people, you know? And that will give you some sort of like validation that like what you're doing is, is working as well. So when you get a guy like Sid or like TJ uh, Watt and they tell you what you're doing is awesome, their understanding of how awesome they are is pretty good. Like, you know, Sid has been the best player in the game for uh, 15 years and right. TJ is there now. And it's like that. They know what it takes. So I do take their compliments like to heart. I, I, I keep that pretty close to the chest here. As you should. And I think it takes a lot. I think it's just when people realize uh, people that have worked hard to get to where they are, to be at the top, they respect other people that are at the top of their game as well in their industry. It's just a mutual level of respect for each other, which is awesome. And I think it gives, I mean, kudos to you because the work that you're doing is so cool for them. Like how hard is it to see an athlete like TJ Watt and then his teammates, James Connor and um, Devin Bush as well. I know you painted his like entire basement, which is absurd. I'd love to hear more about that in a second, but how hard is it to like think of something to make each one of these artworks individualized to them? So that's a great question. Um, I'll tell you, a lot of ideas just like kind of come to me like um, like when, when I'm driving or in the shower or like just random times during the day. And then it's just like, oh, OK, that's what I'm going to do for them, because the more the more I try to labor over the thinking of what I'm going to do that's special for each one of these guys. Um, sometimes it doesn't work when you're trying too hard. So with these guys, you got to kind of understand like you got to get a good grasp of who they are and how, like, what, like, what, what do you want to capture on them? So for Sid, I did something where he was just kind of like, it was a very intensified look like towards the camera. It's like, he's looking at you out of this painting. And I wanted to capture that because I feel like he's one of the most intense and focused guys uh, on the, uh, on the ice um, with, Guys like, uh, let's see, who who have I done recently? With Chase Claypool, I did a, um, he has a more like really excited celebratory look. And I feel like, you know, it's, we don't know much about him, but I feel like that matches what people view of him. So it's, it's trying to capture who they are and how they want to be depicted. And a lot of times with these like really fun backgrounds that I do, I will get full lists of all the stuff that, that athletes want in the background. I was wondering about that because you have these really intricate backgrounds that are like some 90s cartoons, some things are more modern, but everything's very like pop arty in the background, but with all these like fun cultural and entertainment things. So they get to choose what's in it or they just have suggestions and you kind of have freedom to do it. They'll send me a few and typically there's like 
25 to 30 things that go in the background they'll send me a list of like 10 and then the rest is like i come up with i think the only one that's really long list was a uh, jordan dangerfield send me like 35 things which <laughs> It's nice. You know, I don't have to go searching for different things, but uh, he, he was very, very involved with the whole thing. I even, I forget when it was, I think it was probably February of last year that I took it to the Steelers facility and dropped it off at his locker. And he just met me there. I got to talk to coach Tomlin while I dropped that one off and stuff. And it was like, uh, it was just, we made it this really big production. And a lot of the things about the NFL now is athletes aren't just getting artwork done for their walls at home. They have the cleats and there's a lot of the my cause my cleats they're allowed to wear now and the league has passed different things so they can have customized cleats. So how cool is it for you to also be able to design some shoes and cleats for athletes? It is so stressful. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's incredibly stressful. I, um, I wasn't, I wasn't a natural at shoes. So I feel like when I learn stuff on canvases, um, there's a natural growth that takes place. There's like, a, like I kind of figure it out as I go on the canvas and my brain starts to understand things just due to like muscle memory or just uh, allowing your brain to like work out how the light hits something. I, it's really difficult to do that. It's doing that with shoes, but then also working with different fabrics and different uh you know, ridges and, and materials and, and just being as careful as possible. Uh, so I was never really that good at cleats. And it was just guys coming up and be like, hey, do you paint cleats? And I mean, yeah, I paint cleats. And then I teach myself as I go. So I've ruined <laughs> pairs of cleats before for guys that uh, like back in 17 and 18, when I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but now we, we kind of got to we kind of got a system going. I, I, I taught myself how to do it using YouTube. So is, are you more self-taught then? I guess that's a good, good point to bring up. Are you completely self-taught or like, did you take classes? I didn't, I took classes in high school just because I knew they would be like an easy A, right? Like, mm -hmm. cause I knew that I was like decent at it and I liked it as a hobby. Um, so I took it just for the A and then my <laughs> teacher was like, you should submit your portfolio to Penn State. And I was like, no, <laughs> I, I don't know why. I feel like I would have loved it. But I, at the same time, like I probably wouldn't if I went to art school, I probably wouldn't have done this stuff. I mean, who knows what happened? I wouldn't trade what I'm doing now for an experience that happened or didn't happen in the past to go back and do something like, you know, I feel like things worked out pretty okay yeah. right now, but um, I just took the high school art classes, um, digital drawing and painting one and two, uh, I, all the way to like AP art my senior year. And that was really it. Uh, if there was something I didn't know or didn't understand, and this is a lesson for the kids at home, just YouTube it. Yeah. <laughs> like if you want to know how to paint, uh, paint shoes, like I'm working on just a pair of like yellow ones right now, just some Jordan ones, just doing something simple. And, but like, you have to, you have to learn a few things about shoes before you can just get into it. So you have to sand them down. You have to sand shoes. You have to take the finishing wax off of it that Nike yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know where it's my. I have like a little hand sander type of thing that like I uh, that you take over the shoes and do. These are Stephen Nelson's cleats that I messed up because I accidentally spilled a bunch of paint on them. But I sanded them down, oh and God. you can almost see in the logo where the white kind of shows through. Is because yeah. that's like layers of sanding them down because if they're smooth or they got the finishing stuff on them, then you. Uh, then you won't, the paint won't be able to bite to the cleat as well. You talked about Thon, and I mentioned earlier, I got to see your speed painting of Saquon at Thon. So what was that experience like doing a speed painting in front of like 19,000 plus people packed in the Bryce Jordan Center, all for like the most wonderful cause of the year at Penn State? That was, that's my favorite event every year, for sure. 
And uh, I actually, I got to do it this past year as well. And I guess that ends up being like right before COVID hit. So I'm very thankful that I got to have that experience again before we all, uh, before we all got locked down. But doing Thon for the first time, I was so nervous. So I'm going to contrast the first year to the second year. The first year I showed up seven hours before I was supposed to go on. (laughs) Oh my God. Like I was like, well, my parents both went to Penn State. So we kind of, you know, we just kind of wanted to share that experience with them. Um, And uh, we were kind of kind of just like seeing the town again because I would go like once every year or so and uh, just hanging out but we wanted to be close just in case something happened and I ended up getting pushed back a couple hours too so they don't they don't really uh they're like you go on at seven Mm o'clock and don't come back until it's like 6 45 so I was like I my anxiety started like coming up like 15 minutes. Like I I think I might need more time than 15 minutes to set up. And like, and they're like, no, 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 you're fine. You're like, cause obviously they're professionals. Like they have, they have dreamed about this day for like, you know, 365 days. So like I showed up and they got me in and out so professionally. And so like, well done. They like quote all my fears and like anxiety over it because like, at the end of the day, I mean, you're doing it in front of all those people and you're like, I can't screw this up. Like, what if something happens? Like, so it was such a, a, an experience, like all the anxiety leading up to it was like torture. And then it all went away as soon as like, as soon as the music started, I was ready to go. Like, that's how, that's how, that's when I feel the most anxiety is everything leading up. The most anxiety I feel also is parking. Parking? I have no idea why I get like (laughs) so weird about parking. I'm gonna get to the event and there's not gonna be like any parking and I'm gonna have to take all my stuff, uh, like lock it blocks to the place and like, so I always get a little concerned and then Thon's like, no, we have like a, we have like a a parking lot that you go just right in and you like walk to the stage and I'm like, you guys are making this so easy for me. I, I appreciate it. So yeah, much. shout out to so. Thon. I mean, I've I've worked with Thon for my years of college, and they do. They, it's all student run, but those people know what they're doing. They have it so nailed down to yeah, me. like they because they can't miss a minute in those rundowns. It's a forty six hour like planned out event of things happening, yeah. so they have to hit those marks, and they do. They do such a great job at it. But the whole time you were painting everyone's up there and they're just like, well, what is that going to be? What is that going to be? What is that going to be? Because you do it yeah. upside down and then you flip it. Why is it upside down when you're speed painting? A lot of is to get those questions. What is he doing? What is he doing? Um, to get, if you do it right, you should be able to, when you flip it, people go like, oh, that's what it is. Like, yes. and it looks good too. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, there are a bunch of paintings where I'm like, okay, this is going to look good when I flip it over and then you flip it. And it's like, ah, well, I didn't notice because it's uh, upside down. That's so interesting to me. Like the way you can just challenge yourself and take your art to the next level by just simply doing it from a different direction, but upside down. I mean, it was crazy in front of 19,000 people, Saquon Barkley upside down, turned it around it was amazing. Um, some of my last questions that we talked about earlier, a lot of us came out of quarantine experiences recently. And one of yours was in the basement of Devin Bush, I believe, and having yeah. to paint his basement. So what was that experience like? So he just like, he just FaceTime me. Um, this was like right after the, uh, like the world shut down. So the NBA canceled their season and like all my gigs got canceled. So it was like this panic. So like the NBA canceled and I was like, this, there's going to be some sort of trickle down effect from this. And I woke up and like, I was supposed to go to New York city and do a painting. um, Oh, for the uh, hope gala, which is a Penn state, a Penn state thing. Yes. And so that was going to be a, like the Gotham theater. 
and I was like so pumped to do that. And I woke up and they canceled and two other events canceled. I was supposed to do something with the Buffalo Sabres and they canceled and like trickled down. So I woke up to six events being postponed to 48 events like in a row being canceled. And I get it. I totally Right. You know, really good but it was like this panic like well what are we gonna do for money at the time he was like three months old so you, you know when you're at a, a house that you just bought it's fairly new so you're like kind of you kind of freak out a little bit and then uh I just facetime one day randomly i was at my parents house and uh, he was like hey what are you doing tomorrow i was like nothing he's like do you want to come pay in my basement and I was like, yeah, sure. So then that's what I did for the next five days. It was just like, so he was, he asked me like what I was doing. And I told him I was very unemployed. I remember that. Very, me too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my brother, my brother and I spent the next five or six days um, at his house, just painting his basement, playing with his dog and stuff like that. It was, it was a really cool time. Um, and he was cool. He chilled with us for, for a long while talked about different stuff made fun of, made fun of my brother together no that was nice that's a, does your brother paint as well no but he is capable enough to tape <laughs> and like, use a paint roller and paint the edges while I focused on the more detailed stuff. Honestly, it would have been a three week project if it wasn't for him. So he like really bailed me out coming. And, and let's just be clear. He wouldn't have come unless I was offering some money to him. <laughs> so <laughs> he, uh, he was, he was happy to hang out with us, got to do some cool things. And it was cool having him because he's, he's a funny guy. That's exciting. That's fun to like be able to share that with your brother and that you trust him enough to paint some of the art for you to take the pressure off yourself. But exactly. um, I think you're amazing. And there's also local things now, Unity Brewing. Um, Latrobe doesn't, ha it doesn't have like a ton of cool spots to go to, um, but it does have some homey feels when we go to little restaurants everywhere. And one of the newer spots to go to is Unity Brewing. And all of your artwork, when you walk in, that's all you see. The artwork is awesome. And it's what makes that place feel so different and modern and fresh for the younger community to go to. So how did your relationship with them begin and to give your artwork to them? Where did that come from? So I actually knew the owner um, for a long time. Uh, his name is Kevin and Kevin and I would do this camp for uh, it's called Camp Christian. It's near um, Falling Water in Ohio Pile. And there was this arts camp and I was like 19 at the time. It was about six years ago. So I was 19 and I was leading the drawing and painting stuff. And Kevin was leading the music stuff. And in our downtime, we would just talk and he would be like, we were just talking about our passions and our dreams a little bit. And uh, he was like, what's your passion? I was like, uh, you know, painting, whatever. I don't know. And he was like, you want to know what my passion is? Beer. <laughs> and I was 19. So I, I was 19. So I had to be like, well, what's that? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's beer? Uh, I had to pretend like I didn't know what that was uh, as a ministry major. So um we talked about it for a long, long time. And he was like, I'd love to open up my own brewery. And this is like, what, 2015. So then like four years goes by and he goes, I think I'm going to do it. Cause we stayed in touch this whole time. He's like, I think I'm going to do it. Here's the space. So I came, I came to unity brewing at the time was a warehouse dust. Like it was disgusting. It was a, uh, uh, just trash. And within a couple <laughs> months, it was so put together. He spent so much time. He built it nearly yeah. himself. Like, it. so when I go there, I say all that to say when I go there now, I stood in that building a year ago and it was just a dusty old warehouse. And to see how much time and effort that he put into it, um, to not only the building, but to his dream and then to just make really good stuff. 
and to care about the product and to care about like the food and to care about the art. Like it's just a match made in heaven. It's, it's this idea that I'm not just like putting artwork in a place that a lot of people are going to go to. It's like, I believe in Kevin. I believe in his ideas. Um, I believe in people that just want to go out and create, you know? So being a part of unity is is a really really cool thing for me and my wife works there oh i didn't know that she's the blonde girl i don't know if you went in there she's a little blonde headed girl i love that oh my gosh i had no idea yeah well that's extremely cool and if anyone hasn't gone to unity brewing you need to go there check it out have a beer get some food it's all awesome and like you said it's a space you go in and you look around and you're just like this is just so unlike anything i've ever been in before um it's it's so modern it still has that warehouse feel but in such a warm modern way um and it's it's partially because of all of your artwork that's displayed and the radillas yes their son is actually best friends with my little brother as well so Um, we've known them for a while. They're great people. So I love that their business is really taking off and that you get to be a part of that as well. Um, you've done some awesome things. Thank you so much for sharing all of your stories today. And my, my final question to you is you're sitting somewhere. You told me it's called the dungeon. It's where all the magic happens. It's where all your artwork is made and created and ideas are spawning everywhere. So what are you currently working on Or, or is it secretive or can you give us a little insight? Oh, so this little thing right here, it's like, I don't know if, uh, Mickey and Minnie. if my laptop camera is any good, but uh, I'm at, I did that just for our, we're painting upstairs. So we're just going to put that up on the wall. I actually just finished a big batch of artwork. So I am about to start a Christmas present for, um, one of the Steelers, I was going to say his name, but then I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a text from his wife. And <laughs> she sees it's like, why would you say that? It's, okay. So I got to do a Christmas project for that guy. I got to <laughs> do a, uh, a few pairs of cleats because my cause, my cleats coming up. So uh, TJ Terrell Edmonds, um, Fred Johnson over out in uh, Cincinnati. Um Minka Fitzpatrick and uh there's gonna be a few more that they always like a before they're due and they're like hey can you do my cleats and I'm like yep uh, all nighter so there's a there's a a few cool things that I'm working on um that I'm going to be starting here in the next uh couple couple days and uh sorry that I don't have anything to show you uh right now I feel bad it's awesome. I like, I just like to know what's going on in your head, what's going on. I know you just have some random things going on in the background. Um, so it's pretty fun, but overall, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I love getting to know you. Maybe I'll see you at unity. Sometimes we can stop by and have a beer beside all your beautiful artwork. Yeah, um, whenever, absolutely. Whenever it's not your busy season of art, which I don't know when your busy season ever ends because you're fabulous and everyone loves to reach out to you. So I'm also looking forward to seeing who that guy is on the Steelers. So we'll be looking out for that. Well, sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. Anytime. I'm a huge fan. So I will definitely be keeping my eyes open for what you create next and where you go because you're just, it's just the beginning for you. I believe that. I think you're incredible.